Let's take a look at how we deal with sediment transport in river morphology. So in the most simple approaches, we use sediment transport formulas. And sediment transport formulas give a relation between flow strength and the resulting sediment transport rate per unit width. And then the flow strength can be expressed in various ways, for instance, by the bed shear stress or the unit stream power, or maybe a shields parameter, or the depth average flow velocity, etc. Well, in the elementary courses we are dealing with now, we can generally use the functionality uh, of depth average flow velocity. So then the formula reads QS, sediment transport rate per unit width, is equal to QS as a function of U, depth average flow velocity. And in the simple calculations, this function can be a power law. So that reads QS is equal to M times flow velocity with a power B, where M is a coefficient and B is an exponent. Now, what does that really mean? Or what are the implications of this? Let's have a look. Consider a river with the following data. There is a longitudinal slope of 10 centimeters per kilometer. The river is 300 meters wide and the discharge is constant, is equal to 1,200 cubic meter per second. The hydraulic resistance is represented by a Chz coefficient equal to 50 meter with power half per second. And we are going to use equations for uniform flow. So flow is then described by the Chz equation where the flow velocity u is a function of flow depth h, Chz coefficient c and slope ib. We assume that the cross sections are white and rectangular so that the discharge is equal to width times depth times flow velocity. And we have a sediment transport formula that reads QS is equal to M times U with the power 4. And this is a formula to be calibrated, which means that we are going to calibrate M on the basis of field data. So we, here we see the same data again with a bit uh, of additional information. So the text is equal to what we saw on this previous slide, but we also see that there have been some sediment uh, concentration measurements, uh, and it is found that um, the concentration, which is equal to the ratio between the transport of sediment and the transport of water, the discharge, is equal to 0.1%. And another piece of information is that a part of the riverbed had been lowered over a distance of 80 meters because this longitudinal profile is compressed, which means that the vertical dimensions are exaggerated with respect to the horizontal ones. And so this, um, which seems to be a local, a deeper, locally deeper riverbed, is actually a reach of 80 meters. And uh, this reach was two meters deeper, but in a period of 23 days from 5 to 28 February, uh, one meter of sedimentation occurred. Now, this is an overview of what we know of this river. Can you calibrate M on the basis of those data? Now, I would advise you to switch off the video and to give it a try yourself. And then we will discuss the proper answer. Are you cheating or did you give it a try yourself? Well, if you gave it a try yourself and you arrived at this answer, so that m is equal to 0 0.004 seconds with power 3 per square meter, then unfortunately the answer is wrong. And probably you arrived there by considering that the suspended sediment uh, that has been measured is one part per thousand, 0.1% of the water discharge, which means that the discharge uh, of sediment per unit width is equal to one thousandth of this specific discharge of four square meter per second. It is wrong because part of this measured suspended sediment 
is so fine that it doesn't depend on flow strength, and hence it doesn't play any role in the river morphodynamics. It depends on uh, the amount of sediment that comes in that has been supplied somewhere upstream, but it remains in suspension and is not affected by the flow. So if there is a flow slowing down, um, it doesn't settle. It simply moves on undisturbed towards the sea. So this would be a more correct answer. 0 0.05 times 10 with power minus 3, seconds with power 3 per square meter. Because then we look at the part that really matters for morphology. And we can derive that information from observed morphological chains. So when we realize that the sediment transport capacity of the lowered reach is only 20% of the upstream capacity, then the observed 80 square meter sedimentation in 23 days corresponds to 80% of the upstream sediment capacity, which is 100% minus this 20%. That means that this upstream sediment transport capacity is equal to 100 square meter in 23 days. And that comes down to 0 0.05 times 10 with power minus 3 square meter per second. So it is important to be aware that there are different types of sediment transport. For instance, we can make a distinction based on origin. And then we distinguish bad material load, which is the transport of sediment that is equal to the material on the bed, and that depends on flow strength. And this is opposed to wash load. Wash load regards transport of material that is so fine that it only depends on what comes in upstream. And whatever the flow does, it is unaffected and it passes undisturbed downstream. So bad material load uh, would be sand or gravel and wash load would be mainly clay and silt. And another classification is based on the mechanism of transport. And then we distinguish between bed load and suspended load. So bed load regards material that is transported over the bed by rolling and sliding and jumping. And suspended load is material that is um, transported in suspension in the water column. And the particles that are in suspension do go down due to gravity, so they slowly fall. But uh, in the meantime, in turbulent flow, there are also upward flow velocities that keep the particles uh, away from the bed. So there are also other terms. Um, the magnitude of bed material load depends on flow strength. This is uh, the classification based on origin, and we can also call that capacity limited transport. Any magnitude of wash load merely depends on the input from upstream, and this is called supply limited transport. Here the bottom line is watch out with suspended load because it can be both bad material load and wash load. Well, we have more ter terms, uh, a few of them we have just seen, so we can distinguish sediment transport based on transport mechanism, and this is bed load with versus suspended load. We can also distinguish transport based on origin, and then we distinguish bed material load versus wash load. And we can distinguish them based on the limiting factors and we just introduced capacity limited transport versus supply limited transport. But this is not necessarily the same as a distinction between bad material load and wash load. It's possible, for instance, that there is transport of coarse sediment on a riverbed, uh, which is bad material load, that then encounters uh, an area with bedrock. So there is no sediment on the riverbed. And while it passes over this bedrock, it is also uh, experiencing acceleration of the flow. 
which means in the end that the transport of sediment over this bedrock is smaller than the actual capacity to transport sediment as expressed as expressed by a sediment transport formula so this becomes supply limited despite the fact that we are dealing with coarse material that in other reaches is representing bad material load and still another uh, distinction is based on the adaptation to change in flow conditions it can be immediate and then we speak about equilibrium transport which means that everywhere we could calculate the actual sediment transport from a sediment transport formula that represents actually the capacity of the flow to transport sediment and if there is no immediate adaptation but there are some lags there are retarded adaptations then we speak about non-equilibrium transport now if this is important to distinguish between different types of sediment let's see uh, whether you can apply this to a number of cases so which type of sediment transport should be considered for the following and before we start maybe you would like to take paper and pen to make notes because afterwards we will review the correct answers so if we consider for instance pollution of the la mojana wetlands with heavy metals so the mojana wetlands are in colombia they are close to the rio magdalena and the rio cauca and they experience pollution because heavy metals are absorbed to uh, sediment and if we have to study another example uh, from colombia the navigability of the rio magdalena which type of sediment do we need to consider bad material load or wash load And if we look at the sedimentation in wetlands and if we have to evaluate the lifetime of hydropower reservoirs and if we have to study the contribution of rivers to coastal stability and then in particular if this is a matter of beach erosion and what if we need to know more about the health of coral reefs uh, for instance in front of the mouth of the canal del dique which is a branch of the rio magdalena in colombia and what about scour at river dikes and which sediment do we need to consider if we want to calculate the contribution of rio of the rio magdalena to global sediment budgets to the ocean so let's review the answers pollution of la mojana with heavy metals well the heavy metals are absorbed to fine sediments and they come in the wetlands through wash load Navigability of the Rio Magdalena is a matter of the bad topography in the main channel. So this is determined by river morphodynamic processes and hence related to bad material load. Sedimentation in wetlands again is a matter of fine sediments because in the wetlands the flow velocities are so low that also the fines will settle. For the lifetime of hydropower reservoirs we have to consider both because dams block all the sediment both bad material load and wash load and often the lifetime of hydropower reservoirs is estimated too optimistically because one of the two is ignored or forgotten for beaches uh, we need coarse material so then the contribution of rivers to coastal stability is a matter of bad material load of course there are also mud coasts for instance the coast of Guyana with mud from uh, the Amazon River but uh, if we 
limit ourselves to beaches, then it is merely a matter of bad material load. Coral reefs have problems when the water is turbid, and this turbidity can be caused by suspended sediment. Now, coarse sediment arriving from a river in a sea will stay low and not in suspension. So, what is causing problems for the health of coral reefs is the suspended sediment of fines, so wash load. Scour that could, for instance, lead to breaches in river dikes are a matter of bad topography uh, in the main channel, hence river morphodynamics, a matter of bad material load. And finally, the contribution of a river like the Rio Magdalena to global sediment budgets to the ocean, of course, is a matter of all the sediment that is coming in, so both bad material load and wash load.